If you just got a Google Assistant device like a Nest Mini or a Nest Hub and are wondering what the heck do I actually do with the Google Assistant, or you just want to brush up on your Google Assistant skills, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to take you through all of the core main features of the Google Assistant, including music and media playback, smart home controls, recipes, reminders, lists, and of course, search queries, just to name a few things. So let's dive in. Now the Google Assistant has been the piece of technology that has had the largest impact on my life by far over the past five years. I find myself using it constantly on the various speakers around my home, on my Pixel phone, and even when on a run with my Pixel Buds. The main way you interact with the Google Assistant is by using the wake word, which I'm not going to do now because I don't want to trigger your Google Assistant while you're watching this at home, but just know in all of the examples we have in this video, I will be leaving out the wake word. All right, now let's move on to our first feature of the Google Assistant, and that is music and media playback. The Google Assistant can play your favorite music from a variety of music streaming services, including Google Play Music, YouTube Music, Spotify, Pandora, and more. Once you sync your music streaming service with your Google Assistant through the Google Assistant app found on Android and iOS devices, you're good to go. You can ask Google on any Google Assistant device to play a song, play an artist, a playlist in your music library, a radio station, etc. Now, if you don't know the artist or the song title, but you know a lyric from the song, if you're using Google Play Music or YouTube Music, you can ask Google to play that lyric and it will typically figure out what song you're trying to play. Play, you need to calm down. All right, you need to calm down by Taylor Swift. Here it is on Google Play Music. If you have more than one Google Assistant speaker device in your residence, you can group them together using speaker groups, allowing you to play music on all of your speakers throughout your entire home. Play artist Coldplay on all of Josh's speakers. All right, Coldplay from Google Play Music. Need to move music from one speaker or speaker group to another? No problem, Google can do that too. Move music to Bedroom Max. All right, I'll play it on Bedroom Max. The Google Assistant doesn't just stop with music though. It can also play podcasts through services like Google Podcasts and Spotify, as well as it can play movies and TV shows through cast devices. Play Rick and Morty on TV. Okay, Rick and Morty from Hulu, playing on TV. Play The Crown on Netflix on TV. Sure, The Crown from Netflix, playing on TV. It can also play YouTube videos on smart displays as well. Playing Nest Hub review six months later on YouTube. We've had the Google Nest Hub for... Next up, let's talk about controlling your smart home devices with the Google Assistant. The Google Assistant can work with a variety of devices, including smart lights, thermostats, smart switches, robotic vacuum cleaners, home security systems, TVs, and more. To add a smart device to your Google Assistant, you'll need to download the Google Home app and set up your smart devices through the app. By doing this, you'll also link them to the Google Assistant and there's a place in the app to see all of the different services you can potentially connect to the Google Assistant. You can automate your smart home devices and your Google Assistant actions by using what are called Google Assistant routines. Routines allow you to set triggers to complete different Google Assistant actions. For example, you can turn on your Christmas lights by saying a certain phrase, have your good morning routine come on at 8 a.m. every morning where the Google Assistant will adjust your lights, tell you the weather, current traffic conditions, turn off your fan and humidifier, and start playing today's news. One of the largest differentiators with the Google Assistant compared to other voice assistants out there is its search capabilities. Think of it like the Google search bar in the form of an assistant. You can ask it a wide variety of questions and for the most part, it's going to answer those questions correctly. Here are a few examples. How many Academy Awards has John Williams won? John Williams has five won Academy Awards. They include the Academy Award for Best Original Music Score for Schindler's List in 1994 and the Academy Award for Best Original Music Score for E.T. the Extraterrestrial in 1983, among others. 
Let me know if you want me to tell you more. What's the weather today in Raleigh? In Raleigh today, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 68 and a low of 57. What's it look like for the rest of the week? Here's the forecast for Raleigh. What are the main ingredients in gingerbread? On the website Brainly.com, they say, Flour is the main ingredient in gingerbread cookies, as in most cookies. However, ginger and molasses are important ingredients as well, as they contribute to the cookie's unique taste. Does the Apple TV remote need batteries? On the website support.apple.com, they say, Your Siri remote or Apple TV remote has a rechargeable battery, not a replaceable battery. Moving on, let's talk about alarms and timers with the Google Assistant. Whether you have a Nest Mini, Nest Hub, Pixel device, or other Google Assistant device like the Lenovo Smart Clock, you can use the Google Assistant to set alarms and timers. To set a timer, just ask Google to set a timer for however long you need the timer to be, and then when the timer rings, just say stop, and the Google Assistant will stop the timer. Set a timer for three seconds. Okay, three seconds. Starting now. Stop. To set an alarm, you can ask Google to set an alarm for a specific time, on a specific day, on weekends or weekdays, or a specific uh, di different days throughout the week. You, there are a lot of options you have with setting alarms with the Google Assistant. And once the alarm goes off, all you have to do is say stop and Google will stop the alarm. You can view your alarm settings through the Google Home app or on some devices like the Lenovo Smart Clock. Another great feature with the Google Assistant is the ability to manage lists with your voice. This really comes in handy for shopping lists specifically. So when you've run out of your last avocado or you're running out of olive oil, you can simply ask Google to add avocados and olive oil to my shopping list. All right, I added those two things. You can also create new lists as well as delete lists with the Google Assistant as well. Create a new list called Target Run. Okay, starting a list called Target Run. What do you want to add? Your shopping list is a default list that will already exist when you set up your Google Assistant for the first time. To see what's on your list, simply ask Google, what's on my shopping list? You have seven things on that list. They're olive oil, avocados, olive oil, avocados, black beans, and two others. Another quick and useful assistant function is reminders. Google can remind you to do something on a specific day, at a specific time, and you can even assign a reminder to someone in your household, like reminding your spouse to take out the trash, etc. Google will show you a white reminder dot on the Google Assistant speakers I have a reminder for Josh. And on Google Assistant displays, it'll show you what the reminder is. Recipes are another popular feature with the Google Assistant. Say you have some chicken, but you don't quite know how you want to fix it yet. All you have to do is ask Google. Give me some chicken recipes. Okay, here are some recipes. You can select the recipe you want and get cooking. The Google Assistant will guide you through all of the ingredients needed for the recipe and guide you through each step. If you have a Google Assistant smart display like the Nest Hub or Lenovo smart display, the experience is a bit easier because you can actually read the recipe on the display and browse through the list of recipe results. Next up, let's take a look at how to make phone calls with your Google Assistant devices. You can set up this functionality in the Google Home app so that when your Google device calls a number, the person answering will look at their phone and see that it's you that's calling them and not some random number. You can also sync your phone contacts with the Google Assistant to make it easier to call the people you want. At the time of this recording, you still cannot take an incoming phone call on a Google Assistant device unless that device is an Android phone. If you have a Google Pixel phone, you can actually use the Google Assistant to screen calls from people you may not know to see if the call's legitimate. Playing the news is another useful feature of the Google Assistant. You can select what sources you want Google to play from when you ask it to play the news in the Google Assistant app. You can ask Google for a specific news topic as well. Give me the latest news on Tesla. Here's the latest from CNBC. 
Tesla TSLA 4Q 2019 production and delivery numbers. Tesla said it delivered approximately 367,500 vehicles last year, an impressive 50% increase from 2018 and in line with Musk's forecast. On Google Assistant displays, the Google Assistant can also play your news videos as well. Next up, let's talk about photos. You can use the Google Assistant to search for specific types of photos on your Google Assistant smart displays as well as your mobile devices. Show me photos of tabby cats. Showing your photos of tabby cats. More impressive though is the Google Assistant's integration with your Google Photos account. If you have Google Photos, you can ask the Google Assistant to show you photos from, say, last Christmas, show you photos of a specific person or pet you've named in Google Photos, and it'll even show you photos of a place you took a picture of. All right, well, I know that was a lot of information, and the truth is we barely scratched the surface to everything the Google Assistant can do. So if you want to learn more about what the Google Assistant can do, you've got a few options. One, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We do Google Assistant feature update videos throughout the year. We typically release them about once a month or so. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you'll never miss out on one of those. Number two, follow Google's blog called The Keyword. Sometimes they'll announce major Google Assistant feature updates on their blog. And number three, and one of my favorite ways to figure out what's new with Google is by simply asking the Google Assistant, what can you do? You can say, define abracadabra or play Google Play Music on bedside display. Well, that does it for our overview of the Google Assistant. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel to see more Google Assistant and Google Assistant device related videos like this one. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.